Yo, hello and welcome to another video. And today I want to talk to the people that think about quitting this Diablo 3 season because they have chosen the wrong character or to the people and players that already quit because they did this. Yeah, usually you guys that are not that familiar or not that often in Diablo 3, you check the meta, what is the strongest build and then you choose it and then you wonder why it feels so clunky and why it doesn't make fun and why everybody else is faster or whatever yeah so um in the end the first stage of the diablo 3 season usually is grinding paragon or actually it's the second phase um yeah first phase is leveling and getting your build ready and then you should grind a lot of paragon to be in an area where you can yeah, transition into pushing because pushing was like i don't know thousand thousand five hundred paragon isn't fun you want to have 2,000, 3,000, 4,000, 5,000 Paragon. And then it is a complete different game. And also, a farm build usually makes way more fun because it feels way smoother and you have to yeah, think about stuff way less. Yeah, You can do it brain AFK. Yeah, You can do it... Uh, it, it is not that demanding. Yeah? Usually when it comes to pushing, you have to press a lot of buttons and so on. And a lot of builds are uh, well designed around that yeah and some classes have it way easier and one of the classes that is probably the easiest and the most enjoyable class actually it is for me the most enjoyable class that i have ever picked is a god demon hunter in this season i show you the gear later but let's jump right into a rift keep in mind this is hardcore i play solo hardcore so you can't really compare this with softcore yeah, where everybody has higher gems and uh, probably also way more paragon already also, I was injured for quite a while. I'm still injured. Um, yeah, my uh, leg, my knee, my ass, my lower back, everything hurts. And it was quite uh, uh, torturing to play Diablo 3 so far. <laughs> and um, yeah, but uh, let's jump right into some rifts here. I do right now 180, but I could also do 115 or whatever. Yeah, but it's just a little bit slower. Uh, but it is a little bit more risky and I can't do it that brain FK as I do right now. So let's jump right into it so that you have a feeling for how fast everything is and how easy everything is. We are a bit lucky here with a map. This is Festering Woods, best map. Uh, what I want to do is press my vengeance here. Yeah, get my wolf companion out. Use smoke screen and um, yeah, what is the other thing called? Focus mind. Preparation, preparation with focus mind as often as possible, yeah, to keep all my resources up. Um, I just press right click here. I, I hold it. I hold right click here. I try to left click as many mobs as possible by, pre by uh, yeah, keeping up the the two, yeah, the smoke screen. So um, you see, this is quite easy. I have no problem killing anything. You see the bar already. I can. Uh, do this brain afk the only thing you have to keep in mind here with this build where it becomes a little bit squishy especially for hardcore is um against grotesques yeah you want to dodge the explosions when the mobs die yeah these big michelin guys and also molten um you want to stay out of molten otherwise you're gonna proc on this greater rift level for sure So what you want to keep up are the 20 momentum stacks. I only have 16 right now. This caused me a bit of damage, but this is all right. There's another island. It's a speed. Uh, mobs have shielding, but they die anyways. Also keep in mind my altar of rights is already completely skilled. So um, yeah, everything is faster anyways. But this build is uh, yeah, not really demanding. It is very easy. There we have some grotesques. See, they die, they explode. So you don't want to be in this. It feels really fast. If this is too fast for you, then you can change a few talents. But overall, I think this is right for speed farming, for getting our paragon levels up. And then uh, what I usually do is like three runs in a row yeah? and we're going to do this here that you can see that this is not just due to the map that we were that fast. This is all the time. Yeah, like below two minutes, this is the standard and I think uh, if I get a little bit more lucky with the uh, mob type, which is more important and the packs and the pylons, I um, can also use the potion here to proc something as well. 
Uh, I like to play this build with a potion that uh, destroys walls. Um, wallers are the only difficult affixes next to Molten. Like Molten you only have to dodge, but Waller can actually kill you. If there are like two Waller packs and they put their walls in a way that you can't move anymore, then you are screwed. Yeah, You don't have a teleport or a dash or whatever or a jump. You can only move and uh, yeah, this potion comes in really handy. Yeah, you see it. It's the, yeah, what is it, the pink one? Yeah, pretty much a little bit brighter. As you can see, there's zero problems. Just keep left clicking. If you don't, if you can't hit the mobs, then I hold shift. Yeah, I, I know also a strategy that you can uh, change the, yeah, the, the f button that you force an ability that you stand still. Yeah, that you can bind it to space. I tried this, I don't like it. I, I'm familiar with shift. Feels like the old whirlwind barb in Diablo 2, yeah, where we're whirlwinding all the time and then, uh, yeah. Basically press shift as well, or now probably the hammer gene, yeah, where you just press shift to, to bring your, hammer, your hammers out, yeah, that you stopped and then you let go, that you move a little bit. But overall, this, this feels really really comfortable and you see the time again this is pretty easy and we also have the shield pile now which is pretty good and hardcore yeah, that you don't have to worry about anything and that the squirrel's necklace never drops so let's do one more run and then i show you exactly how i skill and what kind of items i use for this one and you will see this build is very very noob friendly and also very very hardcore friendly the way i play it you see my gems are also uh yeah not that high yeah 120 and 130 the ones i have in the gear but there's a lot of potential still but i'm quite happy with the performance so far again we are a little bit lucky here with festering woods mob type i like as well um this could be a good time if we get lucky with the pylons as well like what do we want we want power we want conduit and probably your shield island and then uh, we should see a phenomenal time here there's a channeling this is not what we want but it spawns a pack so there's a conduit all right i think i have to go no I'm... let me check not quite sure where the map continues here um i think this one here is a dead end in the corner or it's a big, big Indica track. It's a big, big Indica track. So we will uh, trail our way back here. And then it should end in the bottom right corner, like um, southeast. Not just in the southwest. Okay, I see, I see. There's a shield pylon. Always amazing how these maps are shaped. Ah, uh, never mind. No, actually... There it is. We finish on that floor. It doesn't matter where it continues. So this was an excellent time. I think conduit in the end, yeah. But no power, so... Could have been a bit better. Power is the strongest for speed farming. I always check if I have to pick these last two items up. But um, they are not what I need, so... Let's disenchant and then... I show you everything how i skill and how this build works and as i said this is probably the best you can do in the season start right now or if your season failed play something that has zero demanding yeah on your on your physicality which is uh, and on your mind this build can be played totally brain afk and it's really amazing and i can pat myself on the shoulder for having chosen this build last season i was i played the wizard in the beginning and I was really unhappy how it went. Quite clunky and after the yeah, first weekend I already quit. Came back later to clear a few higher greater rifts with low paragon but it wasn't that enjoyable and once you lose that momentum, yeah like being being like in the in the flow then uh yeah, it's basically time to it's really hard to get back into it. It's not time to quit but it's hard to get back into it. And um, what else uh, can I say? I think like gaming and especially Diablo is a game where you challenge your mind and not so much uh, 
you know, googling meta and play it and pat yourself on the shoulder that you have played the the correct build and everything feels amazing because you get rewarded with uh some kind of placement it is more about uh setting a goal and uh or not not just about setting a goal it's more about uh when the time comes where the game feels uh really really annoying that you push through yeah that you overcome that uh hardship and i think it's also good for character building and yeah you won't get that if you cheat your way up with bots or whatever or play your way just you know copy every meta or whatever so let's jump right into the build first of all let me show you the altar as i said it's completely skilled so we have a lot of benefits from this um yeah you should you should get this done asap this is the main priority in season 25 uh, 28 uh, if you don't have that then make sure you complete this because you get a lot of bonuses here uh faster greater rift times due to more progress orbs faster progress op op picking you know and also more damage more resilience or toughness whatever so let's jump right into the skills that i have um we play this build with hungering arrow devouring arrow strafe drifting shadow preparation focused mind smoke screen with special recipe companion with wolf companion vengeance with dark heart and then here i use for the passives tactical advantage ambush awareness and call the weak but this is important if you don't have this talent yet this one here vigor critical hits grant resource yeah here five hatred then i would just instead of call the weak i just use night stalker yeah so it depends on uh, your altar of rights progress here so if you don't have it, then just go with Night Stalker. If you have it, then go with Cal the Weak. Yeah, that talent here in the middle tree, left side, middle, middle, left, basically. All right, then for the items, this is also a little bit different. So first of all, um, bottomless potion of Cal 8. Yeah, this one destroys um, like walls and so on. Yeah, so you can just go through them and it's really good. Um, this is the only thing that matters here yeah the only useful thing i think like the only useful potion the other ones for speed farming are not that great so if the wallers trick you or troll you then this one is a nice counter also you want to push that from time to time to get um some kind of uh yeah, bonuses also this ring here that does like 100 percent more i believe it does more damage one other one does more cooldown and then you also have resource cost reduction but the one that deals more damage is the important one so let's take a look on the gear in this case ah oh, the leg hurts <laughs> in this case um first of all uh yeah let's check the cube um you can't see it but i just open it up then you can see it in the cube i have the yeah, the, the quiver basically, yeah, for hungering arrow, the ninth curie satchel, 600% increased hungering arrow damage. Then I have the pants here, depth diggers in the cube. You can also put that belt, hunter's rust here. Depends on what kind of items you have on the on the leg slot. Yeah, if you have depth diggers in uh, ancient, then it makes more sense to put them on or wear them directly and put the belt into the cube because the modifier here is really important. When I have 200%, I have now 193%, but it's all right, I guess. Um, for the ring, I use Ring of Royal Grandeur. This goes into the cube. Yeah, that we can mix around a few sets. And if you check it out, for the other rings here, I use Focus and Restraint. Um, this combination right now with damage, dex, and crit early on gives the huge damage, at least on the rings, but... I think having one item here with cooldown reduction would give us a bit more flexibility. Like one ring with cooldown reduction, crit and crit damage would be better. Because then we can have a little bit more damage on the weapon. Um, for the amulet, I use Quartz Necklace. Um, this is also the best combination here. Cold, crit and crit damage. Yeah, You want these stats maxed out. And yeah, then it's really great. Then we use five pieces of the... Gears of Dreadlands set. This was also the starter set for Demon Hunter, but uh, yeah, it's really strong. Um, I use the gloves, the shoulders, the chest, the 
the legs and the boots. Yeah, so five pieces here. Um, what you want to have here, basically, um, for hardcore, this is all this is all right, I guess. Dex, vitality, crit damage, and crit. Uh, you can in softcore, I would just go for cooldown reduction here instead of the vitality. Then for the shoulders, this is pretty good. Dex, vitality, resistance, yeah, to all elements, and cooldown reduction. And for the chest, um, Dex, vitality, percent life. I use this uh, just because of hardcore. Um, yeah, I think also in softcore you would go for percent life. I could roll this a little bit higher. It's all right. Um, for the legs, you want to have hungering arrow on them. Really important. Dex, vitality, and uh, hungering arrow. And for the boots, they are not non-ancient so far, but the stats are good. Dex, vitality, resistance to all elements, and armor. And then we have the weapons. Here I use Dawn. This one I crafted Primer with the cube recipe. If you don't know how to get this, um, it's basically the last recipe. Yeah, you can see it. It's recipe number 11. Yeah, once you have your altar finished. I used this earlier already before I had my altar finished. Uh, I think I would probably finish the altar first and then go with this one. Uh, just put the weapon in and 100 primordial ashes. This one you get from disenchanting uh, primal item, 55 primordial, primordial ashes per primal item. So once you have the altar skilled out, you only have to find one primal item. It drops two then, even from Kadala. She gives you also two. Uh, then you can disenchant both and you get this. And then you can push your weapon. Weapon is probably the best slot. Um, Dex, Vitality, and Cooldown Reduction in this case um, could also have like damage and yeah, would be probably better. But as I said, then I don't have enough Cooldown Reduction. So for this, now I have Cooldown Reduction on it. Uh, you need a certain amount of Cooldown Reduction. Um, it's close to 37% here with, uh, with uh, yeah, Dawn maxed out here with Vengeance uh, Cooldown Reduction. Of 65%, then yeah, I have a little bit over 37%. You need a little bit less than 37%, but uh, yeah, if I took if I take one piece off, then it doesn't work out anymore. So that's why I said you want to probably have it on a ring. Then uh, you can have here 10% more damage, which would increase the output overall by a lot. Then on the second weapon slot, I have Fortress Ballista. This one gives a shield, also Dex Vitality cooldown reduction, attacks grant you and absorb shield for 2.4% of your maximum life, stacks up to 10 times. This can roll up to 3%, so I'm not really maxed out here. Perhaps I find a better one, better ancient one, but this is the best I have so far. Um, both weapons have obviously um, an emerald in them with 130% crit damage increased. And then we have more items. I use another set. Je Guardians Jeopardy. This is one of my favorite sets so far, especially early on when you start out and especially in hardcore. Uh, I use it here for the helm and for the bracers. So for the bracers you want to have cold damage, dexterity, vitality and crit chance increased. Um, hopefully ancient soonish. Um, look at the set bonus. Two piece bonus, your melee damage reduction is increased by 1% per 1000 base vitality from equipped items. Your missile damage reduction is increased by 1% per 1000 base strength, dexterity or intelligence from equipped items depending on your class. And then three, you gain an additional 100% of your base strength, dexterity, intelligence and vitality attributes from equipped items. So this is really strong. This gives you a lot of toughness and a lot of damage early on. You see it, I have 25 thousand main stat already and also 13,500 vitality. This results in a lot of HP, yeah, 1.8 million. And remember, we get a shield from the yeah, Fortress Ballista and we also get a shield from the um, talent from the altar where you pick up like um, uh, health globes and then you get a 5% or 7% shield. I think 7% and it sticks five times, so 35%. Um, Close to a million as a shield here. Yeah, I had uh, a different combination, a different belt, and uh, with more stamina when I had like uh, or more vitality, percent vitality. So when I was here around two million or a little bit above two million, then I had a shield of one million. So this build is 
somewhere between 2.5 and 3 million HP in action. So this makes it very hardcore friendly. And this HP scales also with the shield, yeah, because the shield is based on your maximum life. So the higher your maximum life is, the higher your shield is. And the more likely it is that your squirt's necklace keeps up the stacks. Yeah, here you can read it while not taking damage. Damage dealt is increased by up to 100% and damage taken is increased by up to 50%. So this stacks up 10 times and when you can keep these stacks, you deal 100% more damage the entire time, which is pretty strong. So let's take a look on the helmet. This is Guardian's Gaze, also from... Uh, Guardians in Jeopardy. Um, here you can go with Dexterity, Vitality and Crit. This helm is pretty weak, um, but later on when you have a little bit more Paragon you can exchange the Vitality for another 15% Hungering Arrow damage. All right, and then the last item obviously is the belt. Um, Hunter's Rust. Dexterity, Vitality, Resistance and Hungering arrow damage by 15%. Uh, really important here is the legendary modifier. It should be as high as possible. Um, and besides that, dexterity, vitality, and hungering arrow. And then either resistance, resistance is the best, or percent life depends on the secondary role. If you have there like one resistance, like coal fire or whatever, then all resistance can't roll anymore. And then you have to go with percent life. But this is it basically um yeah and this build is pretty strong and very easy to play and i hope um some of you might pick it up if they have a really really hard season start um this is really good to farm paragons early to farm a lot of materials yeah um, everything goes fast yeah you see here crafting like it's it's amazing yeah and uh yeah we have almost ten thousand forgotten souls already this is absolutely insane yeah and it's not demanding, yeah. Compare this, for example, with a with a monk or with a wizard. Every time you teleport or dash, you have to press that button. Here, you only press it one time, and you basically go through the entire rift. Yeah, you just hold it down. It's way easier than click, 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 click. It's also way easier for your mouse to maintain, yeah, to for durability. You know, like you don't wanna change your mouse every every two years or whatever yeah just because you have to click like i don't know imagine yeah like how many teleports do you do per rift probably i don't know 30 40 50 so you do 10,000 rifts that's i don't know 500,000 clicks or whatever yeah i mean like that is insane like half a million clicks just compared to yeah i don't know 10,000 yeah just holding down that button so um, this build is a lot of fun and I'm quite happy that I have chosen it and I hope a few of you guys pick it up as well. It's very newbie friendly, it's very hardcore friendly and there's not much you can do wrong with this build. Uh, also with the legendary gems, this is the one I forgot here. Um, I use it with Tegok, yeah, Bane of the Trapped and with Simplicity Strength. These uh, three are the strongest here. You don't need uh, powerful, you don't need... Um, the the yeah the stricken yeah for the boss or whatever everything dies pretty quick and for the um gems obviously in the helmet i use the diamond for cooldown reduction and on the rest of the gear because it's hardcore i use the resistance but this build is pretty tanky has a lot of uh, toughness and deals a lot of damage and i'm quite happy so this is it for now. I hope you enjoyed this one. I hope you enjoy season 28. Let me know in the comments and see you guys soon. Bye bye.